What's up, everybody? We have a very special show in store for them. Brian Sosha is actually out on vacation. So joining me today... Actually, before you get there, I wanted to announce the resignation of Brian Sosha. The resignation? No way. Brian's not. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's on vacation, but I am joined with none other than the president of BKFC, David Feldman. What's up, Rob? What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, man. Glad to be back here. Um, really ready to talk some uh, some B some BKFC with the fans. Awesome, man. It's an honor. You look good. You look good. You've been working out a little bit? I've been... Um, Trying to work out a little bit. I've just been working so hard. It's been crazy, man. Sure. A lot of great things are happening. A lot of great things. Awesome. Well, we're going to get into it. We're going to keep the conversation a little loose today, more casual. Uh, we have some things in uh, combat sports, trending combat sports are coming this weekend. Conor McGregor show. Conor McGregor. Back at it again. Dustin Portier, round three. I saw something earlier where McGregor said it was years ago, but it was. They uh they showed it again where he said I'm not here to take part I'm here to take over, man he took over man he is the number one combat sports athlete in the entire world it's crazy to see what he does and you know I'm really I'm really curious and interested to see how he's coming back I mean it looks like he trained his ass off it look looks like he did everything he was supposed to do to prepare for this fight but you know we're gonna see on Saturday night are we gonna get the old Conor McGregor Conor McGregor with the hair, angry Conor McGregor, or are we going to get the relaxed, the father, sitting on a pile of money? Which one do you think is going to show up this weekend? You know, I said it like this. Are we going to get the old Conor McGregor, or, we, or are we going to get the Conor McGregor of old? Meaning, are we going to yeah. get an old Conor McGregor that is rich and has all this money and doesn't really have anything to prove anymore, but I think he does, or are we going to get the Conor McGregor of old? That trained his ass off, walk the walk and talk the talk. So we're gonna see on Saturday night. But I'm looking forward to seeing this. You know, I don't. I've never been a huge uh, UFC fan, and nothing taken away from the UFC. I just never been a really big MMA fan. But I'm. Um, I can't wait for this fight. I want to see this one. Me too. This is gonna be exciting. I think that Conor McGregor, for him to be successful in this, he plays the mental game like no other. And it's already started with apparently Dustin's wife sliding into his DMs. <laughs> I yeah, don't know what's going I, I on. I think with that. that with everything that Dustin Poirier has been through in his life, and we met him, he's been a fan of our show. He's been Great there guy. a few times. Good Absolutely. dude. That's he's he's not getting taken off his game for that. Is he going to do something else at the weigh in or at the press conference mm -hmm. to take him off his game? We're going to see. But so far, I don't think Dustin has been taken off his game. If anything, I think that Dustin, you know, is now inside because of what happened last time. He's inside Connor's head. And he said that, Dustin said that, that Conor McGregor was the first person to get underneath his skin. He played into his games in their first fight, and that's why he lost. Second fight, I mean, he looked amazing. He took the shots. He gave the shots back. He whooped that calf to hell, man. He could barely stand on that thing afterwards. So it's, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that fight for sure. It sure is. I'm interested to see also how many people are going to tune into that. You know? Speaking of interesting, BKFC 19... <clears throat> July 26th? 23rd. 23rd? 23rd? I don't even know that. We day. don't do fights on Tuesdays yet. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to review my, uh, my notes, man. I'm all over the place. So one of the biggest BKFC cards to date also has some of the drama to accompany that with the influencers. People are a little confused. It seems like it's pretty polarizing to fans. Some people understand it. Some people get it. Others are saying it's giving the, the sport a black eye. Well, you know what, Rob? It's like this. Um, we are always tried something new, right? Mm -hmm. Bare knuckle fighting is new. We, we, we always want to go outside the box and try different things. And this is something different. Mm -hmm. The thing I want to let all the BKFC fans know that we're not replacing any bare knuckle fights with these influencer matches at all. We're st you're still going to get your 11. Actually, we have 15 scheduled, so we have to make some edits. 15, 14. We're going until 5 probably, in the morning. We're probably going to end up until... We're going to end up with one dozen phenomenally matched great bare knuckle fights mm. on this card this is just in addition it's not something that i want to get into it's not something i'm going to keep doing it's something that's going to help open up and bring more eyeballs to the same demographic that watches our bare knuckle fights so we're going to get new eyeballs onto this sport and what the fighters need to know is again we're not replacing you at all we have the same amount of fights we always have we're trying something different that's costing a little bit of money for us to bring this in to create new, uh, new fans, new eyeballs for this sport. So then in turn, 
We get new, new, new fans. The numbers mm-hmm. go really up, and we can pay you more money. That's all this is about. This is nothing to do with anything else. We're not trying to be a gimmick company. We are the the baddest company in the world. I mean, we really are. The baddest men and women fight for our organization, and we're going to keep that going. The only thing that's different is we're adding a, just a little different flavor on this one to try to bring in some new eyeballs, and that's that. And and on that note, we have some really good matched influencer fights on this card. Sure. Hip hop star uh, Blueface is fighting Kane Trujillo, and Kane Trujillo said he's going to knock him out. We'll see. He's a lot shorter than Blueface. We'll see what's going on with that. And then we have two others. Nick Ireland is taking on this guy uh, named DK Money. Both very respectable, nice young men. Both with great, great um, social media and YouTube followings are going to fight each other. And then we have a guy named Evil Hero fighting a guy named Dakota Alave. And we just did this upstairs. The reason why I brought their, their names up is we just did a spreadsheet because we're working on some sponsorship proposals. 48 million followers among those guys wow. that I just said. So that's that's not that 48 million people are going to tune in, but Bare Knuckle on their news feeds, on, on everything that they're going to promote it to are going to be exposed to 48 million new eyeballs. That's what this is about. This is nothing to do with now our gimmick company. We're not doing good. We're doing great. We just came off our best show ever, the most eyeballs we've ever had on the show. 4,200 people packed the Hard Rock Casino in Hollywood, Florida. Um, you know, because you kept seeing the uh, the emails come in for the app subscriptions, ching, 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 mm-hmm. ching. It just kept going. So this isn't about desperation or or doing something because this isn't working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, if it ain't broke, add things that are going to get more eyes to it so that people can really tune into this. That's my whole take on it, and that's mm-hmm. why we did it. And I think it's going to be a, a bi- big smashing success. It's going to be a big smashing success. The energy when you're reaching out to some of these influencers, I mean, it's just so refreshing. They're so they're so hype about getting on this car, just getting on an event in general. I mean, these these kids, you know, and I call them kids, you know, because I'm sure, damn near sure. 40 at this point, and they're half my age. Um, they are so excited, and they're great behind the camera. They get it, they understand it, and they're actually training. You know, they're they're fighting, they're they're boxing, they're they're doing their thing. Well, that was the requirement, though. They had to match up with a trainer that they sent to us and we approved them to make sure they were being trained properly. We weren't mm-hmm. going to just throw a gimmick on that was going to happen. These are, are guys that are really going to fight and they're going to bring new eyeballs to that. Again, the energy was fantastic. It was great. They love what they love the opportunity they have in front of them and they're making the most of it. And these fighters, I mean, I love my fighters and you know, I treat them well, mm-hmm. but my fighters, instead of going, why are they doing this? They should say, and some of them are doing this. They're saying, wow, this is great. Cause now new, new people are going to tune into this in the, in the bare knuckle fighting championship. And I'm going to get paid more money in the long, in the, in the long run here. That's what it's about. And that's what most of the guys are understanding and some aren't, but I just, you know, after the show, they're all going to understand why we did this. Sure. And that's, you brought up a great point. Maybe there is some confusion. Maybe they don't understand, like, are they replacing? Is this a new thing that BKFC is doing? What is the overall goal? And the overall goal is to grow the brand, grow the business, grow BKFC to new potential fans that may have never heard about it. I think it's a, it's a grand slam. So if we're going to put this, um, you know, immense marketing plan together and to get in front of 48 million potential eyeballs to get in front of those it's going to cost us 10 times what we're paying to bring these guys in to do their thing so you know we have to see how different things work and we have to go outside the box at sometimes and this is going outside the box and look if it works maybe it's something we we revisit once a year or something like that but this is not a regular thing for us but if it doesn't work no big deal we gave it a shot we still have 12 unbelievable bare knuckle mm-hmm. fights on the card, headlined by none other than Paige Van Zandt versus Rachel Ostevich, a rematch of their UFC fight. Britton Hart is on the card with Jenny Savage. Arnold Adams has taken on Mick Terrell, probably one of the best bare knuckle fighters to ever come out of England, is taken on the Nature Boy. Woo! <laughs> Who's joining us Arnold live Adams. today, Arnold, Arnold Adams. Adams. And then we have um, Jenny Savage, another girl that we're really trying to build up here, t- taking on Cassie Robb. We have uh, two Tampa guys, former UFC uh, contender uh, Gene Herrera is taking on Abby Velasquez. Um, we have so many great matches on this card. It's going to be tremendous firefighter. Jared Warren is taking on Zion Tomlinson, who's 2-0. Mm-hmm. Just this, you're going to get the same of everything that you got and better. And then we're just adding a little bit of flavor to this. Again, 
The flavor is to add more eyeballs to the sport. That's all it is. And again, it's not in desperation. It's about, you always have to try different things. Look, the UFC just took a shot and they brought in a WWE star one day and they brought in Brock Lesnar. And, and guess WWE, it, guess, WWE has done the exact same thing. But by guess what it did for them? People. It completely turned their company around. Sure. It made them a profitable company and the trajectory went whoop. Well, everybody knows the turning point in the right. UFC's career. Sure. It was the reality series. It was a reality series. And, you know, we just hired longtime um, UFC media um, executive, Christy King. And she's now she's now with our team. She was with the UFC for 14 years. Mm -hmm. She was at our event last um, on June 26th. And she said that that was the most exciting event she's ever attended. And That's she's awesome. And she's been with this unbelievable monster of a company, the UFC, which is great, great company been with them for 14 years and said it was the most exciting fights that she's ever seen the most exciting event that she's ever seen the reason why i brought her name up is she actually told me that the um ultimate fighter was the turning point but brock lesnar when they brought brock, brock lesnar and tried something different that really made their numbers go through the roof well and that's the thing people were discrediting brock lesnar before he even stepped in the ring this man was a decorated collegiate athlete. He was one of the best wrestlers. You know, he is a monster. He's a specimen of a, of a human being. I mean, like, his fists are lunchboxes. Go back and watch the Frank Mir versus Brock Lesnar fight. I mean, just like, it, it was probably, you know, eight, eight inches or so, and he wrecked him. Like, he couldn't even, he didn't even wind up and, and land, you know, uh, shots on him, and it was just, it was a brutal fight. And it just goes to show you, that Brock Lesnar translated it extremely well. Maybe some influencers will translate extremely well. I personally think that, my my opinion, Logan Paul is not the best of the Paul brothers. I think his little brother is doing extremely well. Yeah. I think he's has, I think he has a bright a brighter future in the combat sporting world. And I'm you know I'm interested to see it. You know he looks like he's been training. He has been training. Excuse me, and he looks good in the ring. So wow. influencers, we, 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 wrestlers. We, we can agree to disagree on that one. Really? I think, I think Logan Paul knocks out Jake Paul. Hell no. Come on, man. <laughs> Logan Paul, I think he's in a different atmosphere. I mean, he he fought eight rounds with one of the greatest fighters ever. I was there. I was literally mm -hmm. five feet away from the ring. It was an I couldn't believe what I was watching. Look, he didn't do this unbelievable thing. He didn't beat the shit out of Mayweather. But he stood in, a guy with one pro fight, he was 0-1 going in there, and stood in with arguably the greatest fighter ever in history. All right, man. He's 47, though. A 47-year-old Floyd Mayweather with a 20-something-year-old. And who did Jake Paul beat? A fat, washed-up, <laughs> glass-chin Ben Askren. <laughs> yeah, Ben did look rough. I'm not going to argue. He, did. he looked rough. He, he shouldn't have been in there. He shouldn't have been there. And who is he and fighting who next? Tyson Woodley? Is that a is that locked in and loaded? Tyrone Woodley. Tyrone Woodley. I'm yeah. sorry. Tyron. Yes. He is. He's fighting Tyrone Woodley. Wow. Um if he beats him, if he I don't beat, think there's no, no argument that uh, no. he catapults himself to Well look, you're talking about a three time UFC champion who was a stand up fighter as well. He he's he's not you know, a jujitsu practitioner. He's not one of those guys, Tyrone Woodley. He is a good wrestler, but he's you know, he can he can bang. And if he gets through Tyrone Woodley, you know, maybe I change my opinion. I'm not saying that Jake Paul isn't a good fighter. I'm just saying that, in my opinion, Logan Paul beats his brother. Just like I would beat my brother. Ah, uh, man, I would pay to see that. <laughs> I think all the fans would pay to see that. That, that would be a good bout, for sure. Um, but back to BKFC 19. Rachel Ostovich getting her revenge or attempting to get her revenge versus Paige Van Zandt. And we talked about... We talked about fire. We talked about energy. We talked about excitement. I've never seen Paige more excited, more energetic, and the training that's coming out of her camp and her improvement, she looks like a totally different fighter. Her stand-up is superb. I'm not sure who she's training with down there. Apparently, she's brought in a world-renowned boxing coach. I mean, it looks like it's really paying off in dividends. Absolutely. I mean, she looks great. You know... Love her or hate her, make fun of her for, you know, her Instagram and, and her, her personal fan page. Do whatever you want with her. The end of the day is whatever she does, she tries to be the best at what she does. Mm -hmm. When she went on Dancing with the Stars, she wanted to be the best. When she went to the UFC, she tried to be the best. It just wasn't her calling. When, you know, she did her fan time page or whatever she's doing with her fan page, 
she's killing it. And now she wants to do bare knuckle boxing, knows that she didn't make an unbelievable um, impression in her first fight, um, trained at, you know, trained differently. And now she's with a legendary boxing trainer. And I think she's going to make the adjustments necessary, but we'll see because, you know, Rachel Van Zant was, I mean, Rachel, <laughs> Rachel Van Zant. That's a Ostevich. good one. Rachel Ostevich was tagging her in her fight. She was tagging her. She and was now, landing the cleaner shots. And now in the she's stand-up. training for just mm-hmm. stand up where, where punches are the only strikes allowed. So, you know, we're going to see what happens. How do you see that fight going? Um, war. <laughs> I, I just think it's going to be, I think this is going to be a different page. Van Zandt. I think she's going to stay, stand in there and bang. And I think it's going to be a, a, as long as it lasts, I think it's going to be a very, very exciting fight. I agree. And on the phone right now, before we go back into BKFC, we put it out for the fans. Do you want us to bring our on? Amber Fields, the one and only, one of our premier promo models for BKFC. I'm going to talk to her for a little bit. I think we have her on. Let's bring her on. What's up, Amber? Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see you. Amber, it's great to see you as well. Where are you at right now? So I'm in Vegas right now. I'm on a little modeling trip. So I'm really excited to be here. It's beautiful out here. <laughs> it looks it. It looks it. Yeah. So we're going to get right into it. So how did you get your start into modeling? Like what, what clicked in your mind that you want to pursue this as a full-time career? So I've always wanted to be a model ever since I was really young. Um, I hear like my parents talk about it sometimes. I wanted to be like an on TV, an actress. So it was something I've always wanted to do. And once I turned 18, um, Instagram kind of uh, was first, first became and I was one of the first Instagram booty models and it kind of blew up a little bit. Like I was working for some skater companies and doing a lot of um, like skate shows <laughs> and that blew up. And um, so I just continued with it and like enjoyed it every step of the way and that just kind of built from networking. Sure, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, into a career. <laughs> so, you know, as being one of the premier models, your schedule has to be pretty hectic. You're probably working seven days a week. What is like a typical schedule for you? Um, so n- no, actually it's different every week. It's never seven days a week. It's usually oh, wow. like, it's usually like two or three days a week. And sometimes, you know, it will be like once a week. So it just depends. But every day I do stay busy, you know, with social media, that's a job in its own, but I also do marketing. So and yeah. promoting and, so real, I kind of and real estate all. and real estate. Yeah. I do you're flip. a, you're a little real estate tycoon. Yep. I do fix and flips in uh, Florida. So, so what I want to, what I want to ask you more than, you know, let Rob go down that road with you. I want to know when do you want to step inside the squared circle and put the, glo- <laughs> put the gloves on or take the gloves off. However you want to do that. Cause I heard that you had some interest of the battle of the ring card girls, uh, possibly, one or two of them you have your sights set on. So Dave, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the conversation really fast because it was just it just came up into my email right now. I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not. Amber, I know that you're aware of this. Apparently you and another promotional model were getting into a little bit of beef online. There was a little bit of confusion. What, what's going on with that? What, what, what's happening? Oh man, well there's never any drama on my side. I just try to be myself and some girls just don't like that and that's okay. Like. I'm not going to name drop, but hey, like I'm a team player. I love bare knuckles. And if you're not, if you're not team Amber, then okay, bye. So that's all. I got accused of impersonating somebody, but hey, I've been doing this for a long time and I'm not trying to be anybody else but myself. So (laughs) there you have it, man. Team Amber, you're either on board or you're not part of it whatsoever. (laughs) Now you have the best, you have probably the best angle and the best vantage point from anywhere in the entire facility of watching the fights and, and, you know, getting to know some of the fighters. BKFC 19, Paige Van Zandt, Rachel Ostevich, who's your money on? Who's your pick to take that fight? Okay, so I've like tossed this question around because obviously I want Paige to win, but my money is on her. Yes, girl. Rachel, there it is. Yeah, Rachel. Really? 
I do want Paige to win. Like, obviously, I want her to come back. But I am an underdog. Like, I love when the underdog wins. And everybody wants Paige to win. So I'm putting my money on the other girl. The odds are better. Absolutely. Everybody loves an underdog. And speaking of fighters, who would you con- be con- who would you consider, excuse me, to be your favorite or your top three fighters in the organization? Okay, yeah. So I have, obviously, I love Yuli. I love the energy he brings, his family. He's very family-oriented. And mm-hmm. him and, you know, Dana, they're so awesome. That's probably one of my favorite to watch just because the energy of the crowd. Sure. And then I also do like Tyler Vogel. So I like his story as well. Like I kind of relate to it. Sometimes you just have to like let, let the, let the people go, you know, and and start over. So I feel like him coming on alone was really, I don't know, ballsy, I guess. (laughs) Sure. No, absolutely. I mean, and, and now he's, you know, you say you like comeback stories. He's on a comeback now, you know, he got, he got jammed up a little bit, did a little bit of time, and got himself right, and is ready to make a comeback for BKFC and other combat sports as well. But he, he reached out to me the other day, so we're definitely going to give him a shot. Okay, yeah, yeah awesome. I love that. <laughs> awesome. And, and we know you're extremely busy right now, so we have one more question from the fans. Tell us one thing about yourself that the fans may not know or something that you want to let them know about you. Hmm. Well, I guess something that they don't know I don't know I guess just like how I started with bare knuckles it was um, I think it was BKFC 11 in Tampa you know it was getting pretty big at that time and um, I met Dave Cranson and he was just I think a promoter like a little like not who he is today and um, he called me he was like hey um i remembered you like just kind of i had to step up because the person who hired us didn't show up and (laughs) it was just kind of a mess with the models so i kind of stepped up and you know i just treat everybody like they're gonna be my boss like everybody sure like i don't know who's gonna be a sponsor a lot of my friends that i've made were you know new business owners and then they come successful but they remember me because i was always that one that was nice to them, talked to them, treated them like they were celebrities or they were a boss. So I feel like that's one thing about me is that, um, you know, I treat everybody like with love. And that's how I get my jobs is because word of mouth, people do remember that. So that's how I got here. So (laughs) are you going to the fight this weekend? No, not this weekend. Um, I do. I'm pretty busy this weekend, but I'll be there in Tampa, July 23rd. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we want to appreciate you. Thank you for joining us, Amber, very much. Um, You're one of the easiest to work with. Your energy level is infectious. It's amazing. Uh, Thank you again. Um, And if you want to, you know, drop some of your links, how people can follow you, learn more about you. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. And I'm so happy that you guys posted that picture. Like I read all the comments and the ratio was great. Like more supporters than uh, any negative comments. And I love that about Bare Knuckle. Like some people said, oh, you know, UFC girls are better. I'm like, hey, if they wanted that type, they would get it, but they don't. So here I am. And you can guys can follow me at Miss Amber Fields. That's all my socials, twi- uh, Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok now. So, <laughs> Miss Amber Fields. And thank you so much for having me. There Thanks, Amber. Thank you, Amber. Enjoy your Thanks weekend. For joining us. Bye-bye. There you have it, man. We keep it as real as it gets. And the reason why that we brought her on today is we asked the fans, would you like to learn more about her? And 4,000 plus likes later on YouTube and everyone's commenting and it's good. Yeah, it's great I, to hear. I didn't know why get... you brought her on. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought you brought her on because I know she had a problem with one of the other round card girls. I thought that's why ah, you brought her on. No, that just came up. That was, that was, that was, hey, that was between them. I, I wanted to kind of let her speak on that. So just because we did talk a little gimmicky, I mean, mm-hmm. battle the round card girls? Does that work or not? Oh, dude. Oh, or does oh, that only man. work if you're, you know, not, uh, not, not boxing or something like that? I'm not sure. I hate it. I, I, I'm not sure, man. I mean, I'll, me personally, I'd be I'd out on that. If the a, fans uh, want it, then we give what the fans want. I think that's. I think that's what she was saying. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. 
And the fans wanted to hear a little bit more about her. If you want to hear a little bit more about any of our round car girls, any additional fighters, let us know. Love to hear it. Absolutely. So um, let's talk a little bit more about this card that we have uh, in uh, two weeks from tomorrow. Let's talk about the co-main event. The one, the only former heavyweight champion, Arnold Adams, who will be fighting against another BK star, another bare knuckle legend in United Kingdom, Mick Terrell. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's um, you know, you get two Arnold Adams, and when he comes on, I'm gonna I'm gonna let him know that he he knows how I feel. Good, you're saying it, not me. Yeah, and I, absolutely, man. I mean, I went to his corner a couple times and said, "You got to fight harder. You got to fight better." He fights very smart, right? Mm -hmm. And it's great. But smart fighting isn't necessarily what the bare knuckle fighting fans tune in for. They tune they tune in for great fights. And if the Arnold Adams that showed up the last time he got into that uh, squared circle comes and is standing across that ring from Mick Terrell, Mick Terrell is, is probably going to wish he didn't cross the pond. Now, now if a different Arnold Adams mm -hmm. comes in, it, it could be the the completely other way around. I mean, this is truly, you know, kind of epitomizes what bare knuckle fighting championship is all about putting two top contenders in with each other. And speaking of top contenders, you know, we have Cassie Robb versus Taylor Starling on the same card. Britton Hart, who, wow. Talk about press conference, man. She is guys. She's, she does not seem happy about what's going on. She seems that, you know, she should be the main event. Uh, but she's going to be fighting Jenny Savage, who hopped into the ring, poured water on her, um, which, man, more drama. More, more, I mean, there's some real serious bad blood between them two. No, there is. And look, you know, I get where Britt's coming from, but the end of the day is, uh, again, what, what we just talked about. We want eyeballs on the sport and being able to increase the fan base so we can, you know, pay the fighters – more and more and more and you know that's the way it's been going and that's the way it's going to continue going and um she she is uh you know this could be a setup for a possible rematch with Britton page you know they're both on the same card i thought mm -hmm. we were going to put her on the june card i thought it was better to feature her on the july card and have both of them showcase on the same card to see you know possibly set up that rematch we also have um you know uh like I said, Abby and Gene Herrera. We have Jared Warren. We have a lot of new guys as well. You know, that's that, that's going to keep this thing evolving by bringing the new fighters in, the MMA and boxing uh, contenders that are coming in to fight Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Now, that's what's going to keep it rolling. But, you know, we also have been in talks with um, bringing back our uh, the OG, if you will, the OG of the female fighters. Beck Rawlings, it looks Ooh, like. Oh, uh, now that's a crowd favorite. She's coming back. She's <laughs> the originator. Coming back. She's coming back in the fall. Whoa, 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 whoa! Say that again. Say that very concise, please. Say Beck that. Beck Rawlings is coming back to BKFC in the fall. We're dotting the I's and crossing the T's right now. Um, she's actually. Uh, it looks like she's getting married. We tried to get her to fight in September. It looks like she's getting married in September. So it looks like a. Uh, October, November-ish, but she's definitely coming back, and, um, you know, we welcome her back because she kind of set the tone for the way that film that females need to compete in, the, in this sport, in this organization. Yes. Wow. Wow. I'm a little speechless right now. I apologize. You know, <laughs> Beck Rawlings, one of the other originators, BKSC1. I guess that's the breaking <laughs> news. Breaking. It's just in. Beck Rawlings is now coming back to BKFC. That's phenomenal news. I mean, we talked about the depth in the division of the uh, the female division of BKFC. It's getting deeper and deeper. The competition is growing. Let me, let me just talk about something that's been on my mind a little bit right now. Okay. That has to do with Beck, and it has to do with actually another fighter that we're going to sign and – um, we're going to announce him, but actually we're not going to announce him. He's going to go on, on the Joe Rogan show and announce his signing there. We just have, we have a great relationship with these other organizations. You know, other organizations out there are talking bad about Bellator, talking bad about the UFC, talking mm -hmm. bad about PFL, talking bad about one. We just keep our mouth shut, stay in our lane and put on great fights. And that's why mm -hmm. Bellator is willing to let us use their signed fighters and, UFC is allowing us to you to use some of their sign fighters because again, you were actually all right with that being said you're actually able to pull off what UFC Bellator because everybody's always been trying to put together super fights 
but there's always been issues with promotions and issues with promoters. Uh, they can't come to terms. So now you're actually able to sign fighters from other organizations to come to BKFC? Selectively. I mean, okay. obviously, if it's their top star, they're not letting them go. But I mean, some guys that and girls that make, you know, make a lot of sense for us. Um, you know, we have a good relationship with with both of those organizations. So, you know, look, they're both doing their own thing. And mm -hmm. all these organizations are. And I don't get in the way of them and just don't get in the way of us. We stay in our lane. We're a whole different sport. I think that's that's the reason we are a completely different sport. So they're allowing us to um, to work together. And it's it's been great. I mean, it's, you know, it's great knowing that um, we're being accepted that way too, right? Like, they could be like, get out of here, BKFC. They're like, wow, they're really doing something great. They're mm -hmm. not talking shit on Dana White. They're not talking shit on Scott Coker. Let's work with them. And that's the way it should be, you know, that I, I truly feel that's the way it should be. You know, we don't have any reason to talk, talk, you know, derogatory about either one of those. We'll leave that for the fighters to, to talk about other Absolutely. fighters and we'll keep everything, you yep. know, the upper echelon, if you will, as professional as possible. Yeah. And we also have a lot of r other really cool things on this show that we're doing, uh, July 23rd. We're doing, we're getting, we're dipping into the NFT business for the first time on, on this show. We're going to do the NFT of Paige Van Zandt's walkout. Um, that's going to be announced tomorrow, uh, officially, it's going to be really cool. And part of that announcement is something really cool, which I don't want to break now. We're going to break later. But it's something like that's never, ever been done in really, in really anything. It's almost like the Jetsons. Like, <laughs> like it's crazy. The future has arrived. So we're going to do that on that show as well. So, so many different things on... Uh, <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. So many different <laughs> things. can throw you off you don't keep rolling, man. They so can, many they different things on July 23rd mm -hmm. are going to be great. But at the end of the day, man, like, I love where we're at. And, you know, I'm not going to get into business, but we were made a huge offer to that somebody uh, offered to acquire our company. I'm not going to get into details and all that. I'm just saying that we're not where we want to be. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, it's like you have a child and you're ready to set them off into the world and we're not ready to send them out yet, man. We got a, We got another couple couple of good years uh left to really build this thing up and we're just at the start of the growth so you know we didn't even scratch the surface of where we need to be yet and you know we had to embrace change mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing here and i think july 23rd is going to be off the hook i'm really really looking forward to it but i said june 26th was going to be our best event ever bkfc 18 and it delivered yeah did it did it ever did it ever not even trying to look back on it probably some of the f best fights one of our longest card if not our longest card to date you know a few issues that we ran into you know it happens um but it was a great thing four prelim cards uh, an unbelievable night of 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 bouts and drama sure. wow i mean you know to unpack that card you know people can check it out now that have not seen it the, the BK, bk tv app the bare knuckle tv app Bare yeah. Knuckle TV app. Download that, the app. It's four bucks. It's like, you know what I mean? I say it. It's about, what, two energy drinks, and you have an entire month of content, includes pay-per-view. Buy the thing. It's worth it. How many energy drinks do you drink in a day? About five subscriptions to, B, to the BK TV app a day alone. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger Life Energy. No, nah, Tiger Life fuels us, man. I love it. I'm drinking it now. Um, they're, they're, they're the best. Um, what's next, Rob? Uh, let me check my notes, man, because, you know, all right, they're calling they're calling for us to go to commercial right now. So I got to listen to the truck. Let's send it to commercial and we'll be back with everyone in less than a minute. Awesome. Tiger Life is not about race or religion, black or white, young or old, male or female. It's not about where you live or where you're from. It's about finding your why in life. Tiger Life is a way of life. It's a purpose, a light, the future. We all have a story to tell, so let's tell it. It's time to be heard. Just remember, we may not be able to rewrite our story, but we sure as hell can change the ending. Tiger Life. Energy never tastes it so good. The most exciting combat sport in the world returns. It's Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship 19. Live Friday, July 23rd from Florida State Fairgrounds. Watch as Paige Van Zant throws hands with Rachel Ostevich in their highly anticipated rematch. Plus, the Platform Showdown featuring hip-hop artist Blueface. 
Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship 19, Friday, July 23rd, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Watch it live on the Bare Knuckle TV app or on Fight. The you most. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of Mike Tyson's punch out, dude. I think it was like Soda Pop Pinsky and Super Macho Man will come out to that pose. For those that don't know, David Feldman, he's flexing on the camera. He, no, he's, hitting, he's, he's hitting him with the, <laughs> he's hitting him with the peck shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love the show, man. We can have some fun on it. We we, we can get all loose. Uh, I think Arnold Matt Adams is uh, is coming on shortly. He's going to be joining. He us. sure got loose in one of those post fight interviews or, or during fight interviews. Oh, did he ever, <laughs> man? Did he ever? I think there we have that himself, right now. We call him the we king of the jungle, it. taking on the young lion tonight. Excuse me. Just give me the mic. Give me the mic. You gave an interview to Joey <laughs> and Marcel, you know right? Watch out. You know where I take my hat off You gave an interview to Joey and Marcel, right? He kept reaching for the mic. And you said Joey was the first mic back. heavyweight that's champion. Mic. Four times. Take his mic back. That's a, yeah, back. That's a, yeah, that's exactly what you said. Five that's times. a fucking line. You know it. So <laughs> right here it. on this camera, it. I need you to apologize <laughs> to me oh, right now. You got it. You got it. If I did say that, my apologies. I might have come out wrong. I apologize. punked you. Pure apologies. <laughs> yeah. If I did say that, I apologize. Oh, Thank man. Very sorry. Yes, sir. Great, Thank man. you. You I know apologize. what's funny? Come because over, me and Arnold talked earlier that come night. Come on over, Joe. And he said, All I right. want to come so, back. And I said, Look, now we got that out of the way. Joey yourself, Beltran. Mm -hmm. Like, I want you back, but you got to sell yourself. And he said, All right, watch. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, watch it. I'm like, poor, what's he going to do? Poor Brian had <laughs> no idea what was going on. He was in the middle of a conversation with Joey Baltron, who looked totally shocked. He's like, well, is this real? Is this really happening right now? <laughs> That's funny, man. Oh, man. Big it, shout out to Brian Sosha, man. I hope he's enjoying his vacation. Happy vacation. Yeah. What's, oh, what, shit. Whatever that is, whatever a vacation is, I'd like to know what that is. Uh, perfect time, though. Weather's beautiful. Weather's beautiful, for sure. Uh, I think we're going to be going into, uh, uh, as we spoke to Arnold Adams, but in the heavyweight division, the heavyweight division, there's some drama brewing on uh, on the surface with Josh Burns calling out Sam Shoemaker. They were originally scheduled to fight. You know, COVID popped up. That canceled. I think they were then rescheduled, and that got canceled again. So they had two tentatively scheduled bouts together. Josh Burns calls Sam Shoemaker back out. And to, I guess, everyone's surprise, maybe to your surprise, maybe Sam Shoemaker says he does not want the fight and Burns is undeserving of the challenge. Yeah, I mean, I saw uh, Sam Shoemaker's reaction and he said that he needs to go up. That's going to get him back in to the uh, to the hunt for the heavyweight championship. But, um, you know, Josh Burns is a legitimate contender and it's something, you know, I'd like to see that fight. So if the fans would like to see that fight, let me know, and we'll make that fight happen because I would definitely like to see that fight. Um, I think it's a fight. That, I think it's a fan friend friendly fight. I think they're going to meet in the in the middle of the ring and banging out. Um, so we'll see. You know, look, this is what sells fights, right? This kind of stuff, and we need it. We need it, and the way it's happening. And again, two guys that that want to fight each other. You know, Sam, I do, I do think wants to fight him, but thinks that there's other opposition out there is going to get him a, a faster title shot but you know we'll see we'll see how that happens well, well who we'll was who, who was at ringside during that fight and i'd love to pick his brain is arnold adams so arnold adams do we have you live there he is hey i'm here what's hey, up what's there on? he is how you choo, doing buddy choo. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on team man we're doing good we're doing very well champ how you feeling how's training coming along i knew it was coming pretty good um, you know, it's, it's, it's a regular, it's a regular camp. I'm not going to say too much or dwell on it too much, but just know I'm feeling good and I'm ready for uh, next weekend. Awesome. So I want to know, or, are, are we going to see the Arnold Adams that Dave Feldman <laughs> loves? Or are we going to see the Arnold Adams that Dave Feldman goes into the corner and say, we need you to fight more. Look, listen, man, I know that you, you and I, uh, we talked a couple of times and the last mm -hmm. performance was really just unbelievable. And I think that's what we're going to mm -hmm. see this time. I believe that's what you're going to see this time. Um, <clears throat> prior to, I'd always walk around at 290, 295, and then work to cut down. But as of lately, I've been keeping my weight around 250. Wow. In between fights. Yeah. So just get off the scale yesterday, I was at 245. So, you know, I'm, if I keep my weight down and, you know, everything else as far as the fight game just falls into place for me. That's great, man. We were just watching your performance over uh, uh, Bobo O'Bannon, and it looked mm -hmm. like you were hitting and throwing 
with vicious intent, uh, intent, excuse with me. With bad intent, correct. I mean, I really like my style, the sit back, the the pop shot, the pick is it, it's cool. It looks good as far as from a, a boxer standpoint, but I'm starting to realize the promotion, the fans, people want to see, they want to see some action. They want me to put hands on a, on a off if you will. <laughs> Speaking of putting hands, you're going to be facing a heavyweight undefeated fighter from across the pond, Mick Terrell. Mm-hmm. What's your game plan going into this? He has an experience three and I believe three or four. No, he's four and four. No undefeated. Uh, I don't have a game plan. I never do. I never have a game plan. It's just really whatever you show me or allow me to do or whatever mistakes you make, I'm going to try my hardest to capitalize on those. Mm. You know, the, the, the difference is, and you know, I'm not talking bad about Mick Terrell at all, but the difference is, is over here, you know, we, we just have a little bit different of a game here. We have more experienced athletes, guys that have been around the combat sports world for a long time and all professional combat sports athletes and those organizations over there, you know, some of them were not professionals. Um, and mm. even in their bare knuckle fights, they weren't even classified as professionals, but Mick Terrell's different. I mean, he fought the best that they had over there. So I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to Mick Terrell staying in, in the center of that ring with you and banging it out and re- really made a best man win. I think if the AJ Adams that shows up that I know can show up, I don't think there's too many people in the world that can beat him. And that's, it, for, that's a fact. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not. I think it's been announced a couple of days ago that this is for the number one contender spot. So the winner all of right, your fight. Come on with it. Well, all oh, roads really. lead to the heavyweight championship bout, well, which I'm sure you want to get back into. If you're a BKFC fan, attention. you know that AJ holds a victory over Joey Beltran. He does. And what do you wah, think would happen? Wah. What do you think would happen in that rematch, AJ? Because you are seeing a different <laughs> Joey Beltran now. I mean, but it's the same That's kind great. of Joey Beltran that just is like a a choo choo train and finds a way to keep coming forward and win. That's very true. But if now when we fought, he had the same mentality, but. His style and my style, my style is going to win every time. He rushes in, and yes, it's punches and bunches, but there's no force behind the punches. I'm not throwing six, seven, eight punches. My two, three, four punches are going to be punches that are effective. And they if they stop him in his tracks and make him rethink and readjust his attack. It, it, yeah, I see it going the same way. Instead of it being a darker stoppage, I think it's going to be a, a referee stoppage. Okay. Um I know you said that you don't really uh, have a game plan going in, but did you see Mick Terrell fight at all? Do you look at his tapes at oh, all? Oh, yeah. No, no. I've, I've done my research. I've, I've, I've watched. Uh, I realized that our styles favor each other a lot. But there's always little intricate details that I pick up on that other fighters don't notice. I'm not going to mm. speak what I've noticed, but just know that I, I've, I've picked him apart and seen where my openings are and where he's lacking and what he doesn't possess that I do. Great, man. Yeah, it sounds sounds like you do have a little bit of a game plan. You're not going to share it with us. Complete, <laughs> completely understand. We were talking okay. prior to you know getting you on the phone. We were recapping you know BKFC 18, the main event, a little bit. So, what mm-hmm. was your take on Joey Beltran and Sam Shoemaker? How did you see the fight in the early rounds, and how did you see you know Joey's uh, I guess ultimate victory in that? What were his keys to success in that? Um, well, before the fight, I was asked how, my prediction, and I said if Sam would win it, it would have to be in the first two rounds. Because mm. if it goes to round three or beyond, Joey's going to have that cardio and he's going to push the pace, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, and then Sam did, he had the same style when he fought me. That, that backing up, jabbing, even though you're, it looks like you're active, you're not doing nothing to beat the champ. Beltran had the belt, so you had to put on a dominating performance and really control Beltran. That's not what he did. It was like once once he he after round two, it was like, oh shit, he's not going anywhere. Then he started to retreat, and that's what Beltran wants. If you're retreating, you're backing up. He's going to rush in, and that's all, that's all he did. Didn't have to hit him hard. Didn't have to hit him. Land nothing effective. Just keep tapping him. Keep, and that's all, that's what he did. That's Beltran's game plan. No, I, I, I agree a hundred percent. You know, I, I, as you know, I always call it as, as I see it, I don't, I don't pull punches and I, you know, I'm going to say right now that I don't think that Sam Shoemaker made the, made the most of that opportunity. I don't think he trained properly. I don't think he was in the best shape he could have been in. He was breathing heavy Mm -hmm. after the third round 
And he was. Mm-hmm. He was going backward and not going forward. And the only way that you can beat a Joey Beltron is you have to back Joey Beltron up. You can't let him you come forward. You have to back him up. So if you don't back him up, and he didn't back him up. So I'm not going to say that nope. even Joey Beltron won that fight, which he did. But but Sam Shoemaker surely lost that fight. Yeah, mm. for sure, for sure. Good point. So sure, moving sure. The, moving forward with the heavyweight division, Joey Beltron says he's defending the title maybe three more times, and then he's hanging it up. He's you know He's, he's retiring. Now, so what happens if he loses it before he gets defended three more times? Is he going to retire then? I was going to ask that question. <laughs> you stole my question. I was going to ask that question to you. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, you get through Mick Terrell. You're then faced mm-hmm. with Joey Beltron, and you win the title. Are you retiring mm-hmm. him? Is that a retirement match for him, or does he <sighs> does he not even feel like he's going to lose in the next three? If we fight, I beat him. I think he retires. Because at that point, this is the rematch you wanted, and it didn't go in your favor. Mm. What else do you have? What do I, you beat everyone else, but you couldn't get past me. So I think it, it'd be you lost the belts to the original champion. What way better way to go out than that? I, absolutely, but Great you point. know, out of respect to Joey Beltron, no matter what happens in that fight, you know, if that if that's the fight that happens, then you know he's definitely welcome back to BKFC, but. Yeah, I also don't I want him to outstay sure. as welcome, meaning I don't want any fighter to stay in any combat sport too long. Mm-hmm. So I just want him, mm-hmm. you know, if if, mm-hmm. if he decides to come back, great. If he decides to go away, great. But, you know, you also have to beat him first, Arnold. That's true. That's a good That's point. Very true. And aside from Beltran, which is all, the ultimate prize, the heavyweight championship belt, is there anyone else in the division that you think that you would face off fairly well or someone that you just – you don't like them. You want to fight them, and it's something that we don't know about, or uh, something that maybe Nate Show could put together that we're not aware of. Nah, that's that's nah. I'm like, I'm cool with everybody. But now, if you feel like you know you want to dance with me, come on, we could have this dance. Like I, I had a list I put on Facebook and called out a few names in the heavyweight division. The only person who responded was Mick Terrell. So as far as I'm concerned, everyone in the division is scared of me. Uh, and except wow. someone from, from out the country to come call me up. That is saying, that is telling, because, you know, Josh Burns actually just called out Sam Shoemaker. Shoemaker basically said you're not worth it. You lost to Frank Tate, who wasn't even a ranked top 15 oh, fighter. That's very true. And I think, I think, and this is me personally, you and Frank Tate would be a phenomenal fight. Frank Tate has the power. I mean, he comes out of nowhere. I mean, I love to see it in Alabama. Me personally, that's just my wish list. I love in to Alabama, see that. In Alabama, you want it. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd in Alabama, I, I, Frank Frank's home, home turf, or you know, we're not in, we're not legalized in uh, Illinois yet, but bringing okay. it to the Windy City, Chi Town, your hometown, mm-hmm. I love to see that as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, now we talking. Now we talking. <laughs> um, but as far as Frank. I was shocked in that fight because I was like, I don't know. I thought Burns was going to get it. You know, uh, Dylan Kleckler beat Frank twice, once in MMA and once in the BKFC. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, Total Line, was it? Yep. Yeah, exactly. So I was expecting Burns to get it done. So, But once Tate got it, I was like, okay, now we got a new contender here. But before Tate can consider himself a contender, he needs a rematch with Dylan, and he needs to get that win back from Dylan. Yeah, I think Dillard's, you Dillard's be, been out with a... You should a, be the promoter. We're actually talking about that one right <laughs> the now. The Kleckler's been out with a torn torn ACL, MCL. Some, yeah, some, tore his okay. Tore his hamstring. Wow. Bro. Tore his oh, hamstring. Yeah, and then, yeah. Uh, Appendicitis? Something. Else. Oh, appendix. He he, he was at the fight ruptured? June 26th. On June 27th, he had emergency appendix surgery. Jesus, man. So, you know, wow. let's see if... um. Let's see if we can get this done, man. With that, I mean, there's a lot of heavyweights that we're talking to right now. That that want, there's a lot of fighters in general, but especially a lot mm-hmm. of heavyweights that 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 want to come back. I actually got a call from a legend, former heavyweight champion, last night that wants to make his way into BKFC. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity for you, Arnold. Just go out there and fight your ass off, as you know that myself and the fans like. And you know the mm-hmm. the, the the possibilities are endless, bro. Yeah, don't let us hold you off too long. You know we appreciate you uh, joining us today. We'll let you get back to training. We'll get back to uh, preparing for your big event, number one contender spot. All right. All right. Take Thank care, you brother. for having me, man. Awesome. Right. Thanks, Arnold. See Adams. you guys in a couple weeks. See you, bro. All right. All right. There you have it, Arnold Adams, fighting for the number one contender spot. 
with someone over the pond. My take on this is a little bit different, meaning BKFC fighters, they, their rule sets are a little bit different. Even the smallest difference, though, you know, makes, makes all, the, uh, all the world. Sure. Meaning in BKFC, you can hold in the back of the head where you can't in, in overseas bare knuckle boxing, where it's just straight, it's just boxing rules without sure. the gloves. Sure. BKFC, it's, it's different. Again, that slight change, that slight rule set change, I think made a huge difference in Luis Palomino, Luis Palomino, excuse me, versus Tyler Goodjohn. I think Tyler Goodjohn, he got roped up. He got, you know, he got beat up in the inside, something nice. Absolutely. And he just did not have an answer for that. 100%, Rob. I, I agree 100%. I think that these guys coming from boxing and from overseas need to make sure that, that they're fall in love with that Muay Thai clinch. Because mm -hmm. that's, I call that, you know, I call that the great equalizer. That one is the great equalizer. That one is what made... Artem Lobov, the great equalizer with Paulie Malnagy, a former two or three time boxing world champion, come, comes into our ring and Artem Lobov grabs him by the back of the neck. And you could see it just took Paulie completely out of his game plan. Sure. That is what I call the great equalizer. So that's absolutely something that these fighters need to learn how to combat and how to do themselves, actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think moving into, uh, moving into the future, Brand new fighters need to adapt that. I think it's a, going to be a requirement uh, for their success. Uh, I think some of our fighters on our roster now actually utilize that very well. And some of our fighters that are fighting on the next card, BKFC 20, ahead of BKFC 19. Can we talk about the date? Can we announce any fighters on yeah, that I mean, card? We got some exciting August news. August 20th is a sensational card. We have we have uh, the 135-pound uh, championship, the lightweight championship, as you know, that no one got stripped of his championship, and some people called me an asshole for it, and some people said they understood what I was doing. But at the end of the day, I can never allow one fighter, any fighter, not that, but any mm -hmm. fighter to be bigger than the organization. The organization has to has to hold its own and, and be able to grow. And I think the, you know that's what we did. And now we have Reggie Barnett, who already fought Johnny Bedford, and you know Johnny beat him, beat him convincingly. But now we're seeing a different Johnny, but I mean a different Reggie Barnett, a guy that's that's learning how to rough fighters up, and the way he did with um with uh, Chop Chop. I mean he went in there, grabbed the back of his head again, mm -hmm. the great equalizer, yep. and he made things happen. So I think I think this is actually a very very intriguing matchup. It's going to be the rematch for the 135 pound championship, and then the co-main event of the evening is one of your favorite fighters that we've ever had fight. He's going to be taking on newly signed former UFC uh, fighter, big time Gulf Coast legend Alan Belcher will be making his BKFC debut, fighting one of your favorite fighters, Tony Lopez. So wow, I think that's going to be a great fight <laughs> as well. Alan Bel, oh man, that is going to be fireworks. Tony Lopez is a legend, man. I swear, uh, you know his fight with Joey Beltran one two. I mean, stuff legends are made out of. And no, he has absolutely. his hand full I mean, the with thing that is, one. Is he doesn't know how to go backward, right? He just doesn't. He goes forward, and you know it could be it could be bad for him that he only knows how to go forward mm -hmm. because Alan Belcher is an animal and he can is. punch holes through people. So it's going to be a great look, look. It's a good test to welcome um, Alan Belcher to BKFC, and you know yeah, you're not we'll making it a, easy for him. <laughs> no, I mean, but I don't make it easy for him. I don't Fire! try to make it easy. For <laughs> Then the fans get disappointed. Sure, and I'm not here like trying to kiss the fans' ass, but it's all about the fans. You gotta make the, the fans you gotta don't make like good what we're fights. doing. Then they're not gonna tune back in. So you gotta give them good fights, and I think that's why this sport and this company blew up to where it is today because they're good fights. Like they don't have to be fighters that win every fight, mm -hmm. but they have to be fighters that come and fight their ass off every fight, and that's what it is. So the but main you know, event rematch is going to be for the. 135 for the pound championship. That's yep. awesome. And then a stacked undercard with so many guys um, from um, from the Gulf Coast on the card. Um, it's it's, it's going to be an amazing card. And then we move to September. Our first fight in uh, in Nebraska. I just wanted to run this down because yeah. then in October, October is the first month that we start doing two BKFC shows a month. So we're going to start that in October, November. We're only going to do one in November, and then January we're going to pick up with two, and also. November could be November could be January will be our first uh, live show depending on the COVID situation in 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 Russia looks like it just picked wow. up. Wow, we're gonna be doing a monthly in series Russia. in Mount in Moscow. Yeah, monthly series Ooh. BKFC Russia will launch in uh in Russia either in uh November or in in January and then it's just you know I hope that you guys get get 
the couple hours of sleep that you can get because <laughs> we just got a lot of work cut out for us, man. Well, I think at the end of the day, the fans are going to win for sure on this one. So, we're, you know, we're traveling across the country, traveling across the globe, excuse me, 2021, 2022. Looks to be a... Looks to be a great year to be a fight fan and, and it's gonna, an exciting year to be a BKFC gonna, fan it's for gonna sure. It's going to be a great year for uh, for BKFC, for the fighters, for the fans. It's not going to be a phenomenal uh, year for our, our significant others because <laughs> we're never going to be around. Yeah. But we're going to blow this thing up in 2022. I mean, it's going to be an unbelievable year. But really, man, I really think we have, like I said, the baddest men and women fighting for the organization. The fans are just unbelievable. It's, it's like a cult following. I know that some of them had some concerns that I was going to turn this into a circus. I am not at all. I'm just doing some things to add a few more eyeballs to this thing. And we're going to stick to the guns. Uh, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is the baddest sport out there. So I, I do listen to the fans. I see what you're saying. No concern at all. Trust me, man. You're going to get you're going to get everything that you were accustomed to and more coming up at the uh, you know for the end of 2021 and into 2022. It's you know it's um. Like, like Conor McGregor said, and, you know, to quote him on it, we're not here to take part, we're here to take over. And we truly are. And, you know, I'm not saying we're going to take over everything in combat sports, but we're going to be a major, major, major player in combat sports by the end of 2022. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Hey, man, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. Standing in for Brian, who's on vacation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us today. And we're going to sign out. Send them off. Do you want to send them off today? I'm going to send them off. Go. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe.